Hello students of science. In this video we're going to talk about the nature of chemical equilibrium. Now we've been talking a lot about reactions, but under the right condition all reactions are actually reversible. So a reaction can break down to form something else and those can reform to make the original product that we are talking about. So the reactants can become the products and those products can become a new reactant and almost grow backwards. So these two reactions are happening simultaneously. Products can become reactants. So let's take a look at this specific example we have here. Here we have two moles of mercury oxide that is going to break down to form both liquid mercury and gaseous oxygen. So here is one reaction here. A solid is decomposing to form two smaller, simpler compounds there. However, under the right conditions, we can actually take oxygen and combine it with that liquid mercury to make mercury oxide. So that is the reverse reaction there. But we also see here that what's really going on is all of these reactions are taking place. The decomposition and the synthesis reaction are happening at the same time. So it would be best to put this double arrow there to show that both of these are happening at the same time. It's a reversible reaction. So it's not that it's breaking down. It's not that it's reforming. It's actually doing both. We would say the reaction is at chemical equilibrium when the forward and backward reactions are at equal rates. So what's happening is both of these are happening. We would say it's chemical equilibrium when those are both happening at the same speed. So we take a look. Here's the forward rate. You can see very quickly that's going to start to slow down. The reverse rate is very quickly going to start to speed up. And we would say that it's at equilibrium when those are happening at the same rate. It's not that chemistry is not happening. It's just that you can't tell anymore because whatever forward reaction you have is balanced out by a reverse reaction there. So the reactants is going to dip, the product is going to increase, we get to equilibrium when there's going to be no change in those amounts. Now again, remember, there's still going to be some chemistry happening, we're just not going to see a change in the amounts. It's like someone entering a room as someone else leaves it. The total amount is going to stay the same. So each reversible reaction is either going to favor the products or the reactions initially. We would say that products are favored when we write it out like this with an arrow going more toward the right toward the products, or reactants are favored if it's going more toward the left, more toward where it's starting with. And you'd be writing reactants in red, that's how I remember it, and products in blue just so you can kind of get some color coding going with this. At equilibrium, once we're done with all that initial stuff there, the reactant and the product concentrations are not going to change. There's still going to be stuff happening, but those relative concentrations won't change. We would say that we are at equilibrium. So this one's an increase, but then that's going to level off. This one's going to decrease, but then it's going to level off, and we are at equilibrium. The way we write it out is with K. K is called the equilibrium constant. You'll sometimes see it written KEQ, and it's determined experimentally. You can't just know that one off the top of your head. That one, of course, you have to calculate. And this is only true at a specific temperature. So let's take the sample equation we have here. Na plus Mb is going to reversibly react to form Xc and Yd. So this is the coefficient for A plus the coefficient for B. Here's the coefficient for C and the coefficient for D. The way we would write out this equilibrium constant is with the products over the reactants. And you'll notice that I'm not going to be adding them together. I'm going to be multiplying them. And that coefficient is now going to become an exponent. So I'm going to start with my products here. I'm going to take my compound C and I'm going to raise it to the xth power. And my compound D, multiplied against that, is going to be raised to the yth power. And that is going to be divided by my reactants, the things that I start with. A is going to be to the nth power, and B is going to be to the mth power. So weird words to say. But you get the idea. Here's my products over the reactants. And this is how we get our equilibrium constant, which allows us to fill in any missing variables that we might have. Values for K will change with changing temperatures. In our next section, we'll talk about some things that won't change it, but temperature for sure will push this more toward the products or more toward the reactants, which will change that K value. A small K value is going to favor reactants, whereas a large K value is more going to favor the products. So if you have a really small number, that's because the reactant is going to be really, really large, and you're going to, anything divided by a really large number is going to be small. So you're going to get small K values if the reactants are big. You're going to get large K values if those products are big. So a large K value tells you that this reaction is going to happen more to the right. Small K value is going to tell you it's more to the left. So let's take a look at my sample equation here. Here's my reactants, A, B, C, and D. Here's my products there. So A is the coefficient for whatever red dot this is. B is the coefficient for this purple dot. C is the coefficient for blue, and D is the coefficient for green. Remember, K is going to be products divided by reactants. So we would say K is going to be these blue ones here raised to the C power times, not adding, times these green ones raised to the D power. 
divided by my reactants, what I start with, that's going to be the red dots raised to the A power times the purple dots raised to the B power. That's how we calculate our equilibrium constant. So let's take a look at an example in here. So I have the reaction of hydrogen plus iodine is going to make hydrogen iodide. So here's going to be the concentrations that I just happen to be given. So at equilibrium, this is what I have. The question is, what's the equilibrium constant? So remember, that's going to be the products over the reactants. So here again was my sample equation, and I put all that right there, and we're going to raise it to those powers there. So let's start plugging in some actual numbers here. I'm going to put HI to the second power, because if I look up here in my products, HI is going to be to the coefficient, which is 2, divided by H2, and I don't need an exponent here because there is no coefficient in front of H2 other than 1. Same thing with I2. Remember, I'm not adding these, I'm multiplying them. So this is how I'm going to set it up with my products, each of them raised to their coefficient, divided by my reactants, each of those raised to their coefficients. Putting in the actual numbers, putting these in right here, is going to give me a K value of 3503.4. Now remember, small K values are going to favor reactants, large K values are going to favor products. So looking at this right here, we have a large K value, we are going to get a lot of product made with this particular reaction.